Hi, this is Eric again, and this is episode 27 of Survival Medicine, and I'm going to talk about heat-related emergencies. So I'd planned to do this talk back when it was still winter and cold and before my part of the country descended into the depths of hell, where we've got just crazy heat and a, and a significant drought. I don't think we've had any real rain in almost a year you know, in my part of Texas. Um, but as in the news currently, I, there's a lot of uh, uh, significant heat waves that are hitting our country. Um, and so I want to talk about what is heat-related illness, what's the spectrum of illness, and then you know, how to treat it. Now, uh, the spoiler is the treatment's the same for a variety of these conditions. It's very simple. Get out of the heat. Start cooling measures. But uh, heat-related illness is kind of a spectrum. It can start at one end and progress all the way through the other, or you can jump in at a variety of different um, points. You can go straight to heat stroke uh, without having to go through heat cramps and that sort of thing. So the four things we're going to talk about is heat syncope. Uh, syncope is uh, a me just a medical term for fainting, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Now it's important for us to talk about the absolute temperature and the relative humidity because that will give you uh, basically your heat index. Um, and take, for example, today where I am. It's about 105 degrees at the maximum today, and the relative humidity is probably somewhere in the 25 to 30 percent. So you can see the heat index is going to be somewhere close to 110 degrees um, for what we'll be experiencing. And that definitely puts you into the danger category where heat uh, stroke and heat exhaustion can occur. So let's talk about heat syncope or heat fainting. What happens here is your blood vessels uh, dilate. Um, you're also probably a little dehydrated, so you've got some volume depletion, uh, and this results in somebody passing out. Now, this is not too dangerous or uh, not too bad in and of itself, although it will freak out a lot of people. Uh, but the important thing to know about heat syncope is if a person's fainting in the heat, then they are predisposed um, to perhaps a more significant version of heat illness. Now, you can get heat cramps, and a lot of people that have done, you know, some form of physical training in the heat uh, have probably experienced this at one time or another. You get these spasmodic uh, contractions of the muscles that can be quite painful. Um, this is usually after the activity is finished um, and when the activity was in the, these types of hot, humid environments. Heat exhaustion, uh, moving down the spectrum a little bit, gets a little more worrisome. Um, the best way that you can describe some symptoms of heat exhaustion if you haven't had it is just almost like a flu type illness. You've got just fatigue and tiredness and as a lot of times you can get dizzy and have a headache. Some people get nauseated. Um, and again, this is typically related to um, activity out in the heat. Uh, this happened to me uh, when I was hiking in the Grand Canyon. Uh, very hot, uh, pretty strenuous activity. Um, I got to the point of heat exhaustion was quite sick to my stomach. Uh, and so what do you do at that point? Well, you have to stop your exertion. You have to stop your activity. Uh, you need to do whatever you can to get out of the sun and get into shade or a cool environment or something cooler. And stop, start cooling measures by uh, evaporative cooling. You know, wet, wet yourself down. Drink plenty of fluids. Uh, don't drink alcohol, though. That can make this <laughs> a little bit worse. Um, and sometimes, again, alcohol out in the heat uh, combined can accelerate these problems. But you basically need to remove the exertion, do everything you can to remove the, the heat. Um, now, heat stroke is similar in a lot of the symptoms, except the key thing with heat stroke is that you've got confusion. So you're showing that your central nervous system is now being affected by these extreme temperatures. And when you get to that point, this is a life-threatening emergency. Uh, this can progress to death, uh, and this is something to be taken very seriously. The body starts to fail in its ability to regulate the temperature. Um, there's talk that when you get to a heat stroke, you stop sweating. That can occur, but uh, by no means is that an absolute. You can have people with heat stroke and have them profusely sweating. So don't use that as a um, delimiter or some kind of marker to decide whether somebody's got heat stroke or not. Uh, again, the key thing is confusion or showing some problems of uh, mental impairment. Now, this can be tricky. Again, if, if somebody's out in the heat doing something crazy and drinking a lot of alcohol, is it are they drunk or do they have heat stroke? Um, if you're not sure, 
I would err on the side of heat stroke because just being drunk, unless they do something stupid to fall off a cliff or, or injure themselves, typically is not going to lead to death. Heat stroke, um, uh, people die of this all the time. So if you've got somebody that you think has heat stroke, you've got to cool them and be very aggressive with it uh, and be very fast with it. You, you know, pack their groin and neck with ice, uh, anything that's got large vessels close to the skin. Give as much fluids as they can. Get rid of restrictive clothing. Uh, you know, strip them down to their skivvies. Uh, some people put like a, a blanket or a light sheet rather over them and mist it with water and have a fan so you really increase evaporative cooling. Um, so this is, uh, you know, what we're talking about. You put a very light sheet, mist it so that it's wet, um, and have a temperature, I mean, I have a fan, they'll blow, and uh, again, that evaporative cooling will help lower, uh, lower the temperature. If you have the ability uh, or access for IV fluid replacement, uh, that would be key as well. So again, the bottom line with all these things is you got to stop the exertion, you got to get into a cooler environment, you have to maintain hydration status. If the patient is confused, then you must act very quickly and be very aggressive in cooling these people down uh, to prevent this progressing to a, a, a fatal position. So again, nothing too complex, nothing too, you know, earth-shattering in any of this. Um, but I think the key thing is recognition. Uh, if you're around other people, responsible other people, just make sure that you've got hydra you know, hydration is going on, and you're watching and uh, for these symptoms to occur. Uh, we went out just, uh, I guess, a, a week ago, um, doing some training, and uh, and we had two people with a heat exhaustion uh, that had to be taken out of the training and removed for the day so that things didn't progress further. So it does happen. It happens all the time. And being uh, aware of this can be uh, a life-saving intervention at times. Again, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry this took a little while to get out. I've had uh, quite a busy summer. Very fun. Went to uh, uh, my 20th wedding anniversary trip um, to Europe. Got to go see the D-Day beaches in Omaha at Omaha Beach and Sword Beach up in Normandy. It was phenomenal. Um, but uh, again, thanks for everybody's uh, comments and viewership.